For more on Washington, D.C.'s legislative logjam, we want to bring in Donna Edwards. She is former Maryland congresswoman. She's now an MSNBC political analyst. Also, Kevin Brady, who's the former Texas congressman who served as chair of the Ways and Means Committee. And thank you both for being with us this morning. Kevin, why don't we start with you? Um, your party, you're, you're looking at what's happened here. I'm guessing you're probably pretty glad you're not there at the moment dealing with this. Well, not really. First, Donna, it's nice to see you again. Um, Becky, uh, no, it's been painful, frankly, because there's a lot of good people in the House Republican conference that just want to get back to work. It's been very frustrating for them. I think, you know, in a sense, uh, the election um, tomorrow may be a bit of a fresh start uh, in the sense you've got nine candidates, half of whom um, uh, have been in leadership roles, uh, voted on and elected conference wide or near conference wide. A lot of talent. I think uh, in that group, uh, I think we will know probably by one o'clock tomorrow um, who that speaker nominee is and how close they are uh, to 217. Um, I think the conference is eager to arrive at that uh, consensus. And uh, I think they'll give this person more time the majority of leaders Scalise had. I think they're going to be eager to get that 217 or near before they head to the floor. And so, uh, look, it's been pretty raw these last 20 days uh, among the House Republicans, uh, not easily moving past some of these battles. But um, look, I wouldn't discount the quality of the people who are running and their ability to, to, to gain consensus from, from both ends, really, of the Republican conference. I mean, there's got to be so much frustration with those original eight who voted to remove uh, Kevin McCarthy from the speakership position to set down this path and then to not know exactly what's there, to hear some of them now saying, hey, you have to vote for, for whoever, there's got to be so much frustration for them for kicking this process off into place. Yeah, there, there's no doubt about that. And I think what's interesting is you don't see in this nine, you don't see necessarily a Freedom Caucus placeholder or necessarily um, on the other side of the spectrum, a placeholder to block. Uh, so there may well be two or three candidates in there that are amenable or who can bring that consensus together. Hey, Donna, at some point, I, I, I would think this becomes a problem for everyone because you've got to get back to the business of what's happening in the House. Where, where do we go? What kind of issues will it be? Will they be able to start legislating again quickly? Or is there going to be too much back and forth? Well, it's so interesting and uh, good to see you as well, Kevin, uh, to think about times when you know, a Kevin Brady and a Donna Edwards could have policy disagreements, but could come together on uh, some issues. And so I, I think that right now we're in a situation where if a, if a speaker does not come out of this round here, I think it increases the pressure uh, to come with some kind of an agreement about a temporary speaker. Um, you look at what's ahead in the next several, uh, several week, couple of weeks, um, you've got the budget that needs to be finished and appropriations. Uh, you have this uh, aid package that has to be has to be done. There's a lot of work to be done between now and the end of the year, and you just can't have this chaos that continues. Um, and unfortunately, I think looking at this group of nine uh, candidates, I'm not really sure uh, that any of them can, at least on a first or even a second ballot, uh, come up with the 217 that's necessary. And I think that that increases uh, the pressure as it should. The American people are looking at this and thinking that the chaos is not just good. It's not good for uh, for us in the United States, but it is horrible uh, for the rest of the world. So, um, you know, the pressure is on. Hey, uh, Congressman Brady, Kevin, the uh, the nine, and you, you referenced where I was going to go. You got these... Some of these Freedom Caucus guys are way over here, and then you've got some some guys that were elected in in uh, areas that voted for Joe Biden. So that you know that defines where these guys are. And so you're not going to get a Jordan, and then you know you're not going to get somebody over here who doesn't satisfy the Freedom Caucus. Who out of the nine is, is palatable? But what about Byron Donalds? Is he too uh, is he too freedomy? Or and is Emmer too Scalise? Is he too uh, you know too middle of the road? That, that that's the problem Don is alluding to, and 
Uh, then there's no way they're going to the Democrats. Donald, Donald wants that to make some deal for, uh, you know, for a pro temporary thing. It'd be easier to get four guys that didn't have McCarthy. Just put McCarthy back up and get four of those guys to reverse their, their votes because he had 96 yeah. percent of the caucus. Yeah, so I, I don't see that happening just from the dynamics that have occurred since that day. And as you know, 96 percent of House Republicans agree with you. This should have never have happened. So, look, I think among the nine, I hesitate to just pick out one or two. But he, here's the point. They're all well known from the conference in their leadership positions, have been supported before. You know, Congress, as Don will tell you, is a bit of a small high school. So you get to know these people very well and how uh, the respect that they have, their ability to build that consensus. And I think you've got a number of candidates in there uh, who can do that. But I think the pressure is, I don't, I don't believe there'll be a coalition at all. I don't yeah. think that's real I mean, Donna, or possible. Donna, they, um, they could do president. You could have a couple of Democrats do president. That wouldn't kill them, would it? For yeah, someone you know, that I they think, um, Look, at the end I, of the day, I just don't really, I agree with Kevin. I mean, this. I really, yeah, I don't really see that happening. But I think at the end of the day, um, that if a speaker um, it doesn't come out of this part of the process, that it really does ramp up the pressure. There's just too much that has to be done. It's not like there are things that people want to do. There are things that have that must be done in the next uh, couple of weeks, and Congress cannot remain stymied uh, like okay. this. And then even as the Senate moves forward on an aid package, where does it go if the House doesn't have a speaker who can function?